Hello and welcome to Let's Code Physics, where we are going to play around for a little bit with Trinket's Music Code app. I'm not even sure what this is based on. I'm not sure how long this has been here. I found it one day when I was going to create a new Trinket and discovered that they have a music option. So the way it works is you write a code basically for the music that you wanted to play down here and then it creates the sheet music up here. Now you notice I've got two little tabs here. I've got one for treble, one for bass. Uh, we'll look at what each of those means in a little bit. First, let's just stick with the treble clef up here. So when I'm in the treble clef, um, I just type in the name of the note that I want it to play. So I've got a scale here with C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Um, when, when you want it to go up an octave, you have to add these little apostrophes, right? So watch this note right here. Watch this, uh, this C here. If I take away the apostrophe, it jumps down to middle C, right? So, so C by itself is middle C. Uh, and then when I type in the uh, apostrophe, it goes up one octave. And you can probably guess that if I type in two apostrophes, it goes up two octaves, right? So that's how I'm getting the high C up here. Uh, that I've got a C double primed here. I could make this a C triple prime and have it go way, way up above the uh, above the staff there. But uh, yeah, so this is a neat way that you can encode some music. Um, in the bass clef, uh, uh, it's, it goes a little bit differently. Here, your notes are expected to be capitalized to indicate that you are down here in the bass clef. Uh, middle C is again uh, a lowercase c. So, right, so this middle C uh, here is the same as this middle C over here, so those are both indicated by a lowercase c. If I want to go down an octave, let's suppose I want to take the scale and go down with it, I could then go B, uh, let's change this to B4, we'll talk about what the numbers mean in just a minute. Actually, let's even go down by eighth notes. B, uh, I have to go backwards, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. And let's suppose I wanted to keep going down uh, to, to another octave, so make this a fourth, so it's more traditional scale there. Um, I could go down another octave by doubling the letter. So if I type in B, I jump back up here uh, to B just below middle C, but if I type in another B, if I double that up, then I go down an octave. And so if I wanna go down an octave again, I just type in, uh, what is that gonna be, A, A, uh, then G, G, and you see every time I type it, it goes up an octave, but then it comes back down. Uh, so let's see, then I have to wrap back around to uh, F. So here's the F closest to middle C. I go down another octave here. E, uh, let's see, next needs to be D, and then C. Uh, if I wanna go down another octave, I would have to do B, 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 you see every time I type a B, it goes down another octave. So it's a little bit different uh, convention going up an octave from middle C versus going down an octave from middle C. If you wanna go up an octave from middle C, um, you need to type in the apostrophe here. If you wanna go down an octave, you need to double up a an uppercase letter here. Um, let's see what this sounds like now that I've got it. And basically you can play it anytime you want up here. And let's get rid of that so that we're resolving on the tonic. There we go, that's better. Um, let's see, you can also introduce accidentals here. So let's suppose uh, we want to uh, jazz it up a little bit here in the second half. So let's suppose I wanted to make this a B flat. Um, I can add in a minus. Uh, to put a flat in front of that B, which makes sense. A flat lowers the value. Minus sign means you're lowering the value. So let's try that out. So there's my, my B flat. Let's turn it into a minor scale coming down. Let's see, that's gonna have a B flat and an E flat. Let's see, oh, and then you need an A flat, right? There's there's three flats in, in C minor because it's the same thing as e, a, e flat major. There we go. So we get a major scale going up, major scale for the second third. 
And then we get a minor scale going down. That's pretty cool. Um, you can also introduce sharps. Probably not a surprise for that. You're just going to use the sharp symbol. Um, let's see. Let's put a sharp going up. Let's make this. Um, let's put. Oh, let's put in a tritone here just to anger the the medieval um, uh, uh, composers. There we go. So we'll put a sharp there and we'll put a sharp there. There we go. So the sharp is, is, is just the pound sign, just like it is in music. And then let's suppose you needed to introduce a natural. So let's suppose I wanted to make this, um, let's suppose I wanted to make this, can I go to a 16th note? Oh, I can. Okay, let's suppose I wanted to make this a 16th note, and then I wanted to have another F here. Um, I it, it's, it's explicitly changing to a natural here, or I can put in an N here to, to make sure that it goes to a natural. Uh, we might explore that more when we get into key signatures. Well, I have really messed up the C major scale, haven't I? Um, and that actually brings us to the last thing I wanted to talk about in this video. The way you change the duration of these notes is you just put a number afterwards. And it's you're putting the number that represents the fraction of the note, right? So if you put an 8 after a note, it's an 8th note. If you put a 16 after a note, it's a 16th note. So in my mathematical brain, it's going a little bit backwards because 16 is higher than 8, but a 16th note is shorter than an 8th note. So just imagine there's a TH at the end there. And of course, it won't let me put a TH there for my own benefit. Um, but yeah, so then when you want to switch back to quarter notes, you just put a 4. Um, over here, we've got a half note. So you put in a 2. Um, I'm guessing that means a 1 gives you a whole note. Yep, sure enough, a 1 will give you a whole note. You notice I don't have a number on the first note, so it defaults to a quarter note if you don't include one at the beginning. However, if you then don't include one afterwards, you notice I don't have any on the E, F, G, A, B here. Uh, here I've got the E, F, G, A, B. It retains whatever the note was, whatever the duration was here. So once I set this one as an eighth note, I don't have to repeat eight on every single one of these. So for example, I don't have to have an eight on this A or this B. I can delete those and they'll remain eighth notes. On the other hand, if I delete it off of this G here, then those all now suddenly become 16th notes. It's messed up my measure count, etc. cetera. Uh, so we'll, we'll turn that back to an eighth note just so that I've got some semblance of a scale working out here. So that's enough to get you started with this. Um, you notice we haven't covered triplets. We'll talk about how you get triplets uh, a little bit later on. Uh, but what I'd like to do in the next episode is take a look at how we can get a little bit uh, more out of the rhythm here and how to set up rests. We'll also get into how to set up triplets and then we'll move on from there getting to more advanced stuff with this cool little music builder. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.